Welcome to Play PSVR 2, the podcast. That's right, we're here tonight and we are here to save you time and save you money. And to do that, I need the one, the only, my favorite co-host, my only co-host, Alex. Are you going to tackle saving time or money, Alex, or both? I think I'm going to, well, I'm going to be saving people money, but if they don't listen to me, they're going to be saving time. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Mm. Um with with some of our some of our content today adam i did, you're my favorite co-host too thanks for throwing that out there about time we put that out there yeah that's right uh, here's the thing i guess i'm going to be saving people time and money too i suppose more time than money on my end uh your end i don't know either way but as we get started alex you know that as a single man i have to be out and about and i need to to meet as many people as I can, which is a little, it's harder as you get older. And so I came across this individual and they were non-binary, which from werewolves within you and I know, I don't don't know what a lot of these mean, right? So I talked to this individual, they're non-binary and everything was going great. So by the end of the night, I was like, you know what? I don't want to be too forward. Do you, but do you mind if I can she them boobies? Did you like it? Did you like it? I did like that, Adam. That was <laughs> that was good. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I still don't know what that actually means. Well, uh, non-binary is that different than pansexual, or is that the same? It's different. Different pansexual, I think, refers to what somebody finds sexually interesting. I think non-binary is more of like a gender specification. Like they they don't feel entirely male. They don't feel entirely female. They kind of have. You know, they feel like they fall somewhere in the middle. I'm guessing. Huh. I'm not an expert in this, I don't, but not not a bad not a bad joke. Adam. What are you? I'm I'm just a dude. I don't know. My hair gets long enough. I probably fall into some other category, but I I don't know. I just try not to answer the question. I just try to live my life. Yeah. Just go where my or go where my boat floats me. Dude, what I do, which I did in my in, or I say my our interview for yeah. Sony was I try to get HR to ask, and then I'm going to sue them, and then I'm going to retire. That's, that's I apply to every yeah. job I can. That's my, it hasn't worked yet, but that's my goal. I need one slip up, one nip slip, one lip slip, boom, I'm retired, it's game over. <laughs> Adam's whole career, Adam in high school, sitting down with a guidance counselor, what's your, what's your 10-year plan? I don't know, I figure I'll get a couple of nip slips in there, maybe one lip slip, and I'll be golden. <laughs> yeah i mean uh, tell me it's a bad plan tell me it's a bad plan it's working for you so far adam but adam what are you drinking is that your gamer juice it is so you this is i i did take a, a sip before we actually went live here so remember a while ago i had talked about poppy it's this new soda that's doesn't have as much sugar doesn't have all the freaking chemicals and garbage in it for you and a while ago i was like that was good so, Alex, I want to re renege, I guess, because I'm trying this now, the same flavor. It's not that good. I said it was real good last time. Would I go as far to say it's bad? Uh, no, but it's not great. Like, there's clearly something off. This is not orange soda. And I had one a few days ago that was root beer. It was not root beer. And it's not off in the good way. So I had to get another one to to share that, you know what, guys, maybe give it a pass. It's also like $2.50. Just nuts for a can of soda. Yeah. That should be like 50 cents tops. No, dude. Yeah. It's like at, at, at best case scenario, you can maybe get them for two bucks um five but five ca- grams of uh, sugar i mean is there caffeine in it at least i don't think no there's probiotics there's apple cider vinegar there's uh, something for your immune system and seven percent juice like it's something that in my mind i would really like but almost in this case being similar to something you already know and love is actually a detriment it's like a yeah. game I'll be talking about here shortly. You know what it should be. So when this isn't it, it's like, ugh. 
you know. But what you're what you're talking about, it's the uncanny valley. And I might have talked about it before, but when you get the further away you are from something, the more grace you get and how you're trying to approach it. But then if you get too close, it drops down in the middle. It pops up everywhere. Mostly Did with you robots, just like yeah. spend the time that we're not podcasting reading like Sigmund Freud or something? What what are all no. these random, stupid psychological sayings and theories that you have? You've never heard of the Uncanny Valley? It's like a popular thing in regard to like animation and video games and like robots and stuff, animatronics and things like that. I would argue it is not popular because I haven't, and I, I'm well, I'm a well-read man. Leave it in the comments if you've heard of if you've heard of the Uncanny Valley, just let us know. And if you think I'm a weirdo for knowing what that is, then also yeah, let us yeah, know. you are. I, I'm uh, well-read, well-cultured, well-endowed. I'm I'm a well in a lot of things. I don't know it. You suck. What are you drinking? Speaking of weirdo, so every time I go to Starbucks, I see I see the uh, the ladies getting this stuff called pink drink. And so I was at the gas station, and I got a Starbucks pink drink because I wanted to figure out what it was like. And I, unfortunately, after reading, it sounds like there's not much caffeine at all in here. So, like, what are you doing going to Starbucks and getting something that's not caffeinated? But it looks like it's uh, strawberry and acai and coconut milk. It always looked kind of horrendous, so I figured I'd. Hey, maybe I'll find something to comment with the ladies with this one. You this know? is this is interesting because as a non-caffeine drinker, I would maybe like this, but and you know, there's Starbucks everywhere. Give me the verdict. It certainly tastes pink. Whatever that means. Do you do you taste coconut? Because I don't love coconut. Uh it it has the 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 feeling of coconut water, but it doesn't taste like coconut milk. Coconut okay, milk, then sorry. I, then I would be okay with that. It's like got grape juice and strawberry juice. Like they don't even say that. I don't see one thing in here that says acai, yet it calls itself an acai drink. Is that it healthy? Of, is it would that, you consider it a healthy drink? No, dude, it's 150 calories in here, 25 grams of sugar. Let's yeah, but just sometimes say, like an apple is like 15 grams of sugar, right? And that's like an it's a fruit. It's not bad sugar. It's this like, is 25 grams of added sugars. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's basically like drinking candy is what it tastes yeah, like. Yeah, you're too. drinking Kool-Aid. Mm. I almost wish it was Kool-Aid because it's a bit the coconut milk makes it a bit too thick. I'm not happy with my gamer juice. Fortunately, of course, I got iced coffee. I gotta nurse that. The all, thing all is, how often do we actually like our gamer juices? I don't think it's a requirement. I think it's better if your gamer juice is not enjoyed. I mean yeah, but you would. I would like a good one every now and then. I feel like I dislike <laughs> mine more than you. Do I just dislike things in general? Maybe I feel you're like just a. I yeah. I dislike games more than you. I dislike drinks more than you. I dislike life. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, you're the man who slept till two p.m. the other day. So yeah, what the heck was that? I have no idea. How I slept, yeah, for those who don't know, this weekend, somehow I slept until 2 p.m. And you ain't enjoying stay. life enough. I, uh, well, I was enjoying life pretty hard the night before, playing some Helldivers. Adam, what have you been playing? I know you haven't been playing VR. I'm the only one that played VR this week. I got something to talk about. But Adam, what have you been playing instead of VR? Yeah, I'm not going to go into the whole freaking thing of it. I, I've, I've fan, Final Fantasy, dude, I like playing those games. Rebirth came out, so the past week and a half I've been playing that. Um, I'm not getting no spoilers here in case you want to play it. There's a lot going for it. That it's impressive how much stuff they put in the game. Me personally, I give it a six out of ten. And because I don't want to spoil stuff, I, I'm not gonna dive into anything. But I felt like it was really bloated. The things that could have been powerful weren't powerful enough. It wasn't as focused on the plot, which I'm a plot guy. I want I want that plot. And it's like, you know. 80% of the game was just like one thing, like you're, um, I, if you played the first one, you'll know, but I'm not even going to go into it. it. The plot development was just very poor, uh, in my opinion. And maybe it's just the original game was that way and they're having to remake it. And, you know, who likes the middle two thirds of the game, right? Normally the beginning catches you and then the end is what really wallops the punch. So maybe that's the case here. I don't know, but I did not love it. That's where I'm going to save you, like daylight savings time. I'm saving you time. I wouldn't play the game. And if you do, don't do the side quests. 
completely unnecessary, doesn't help you. Eventually, you're going to get sick of them. Uh, very one-dimensional, one-note, not very exciting. And if you don't like it at all, or if you were on the edge, nah. If you didn't like Remake, I don't know how you would like Rebirth. So in that way, I could potentially save you money too. So that's mine. Alex, you've been playing... Uh, this isn't what's going to save people time or money, but you're trying to convince me to play yet another game. Alex wants me to just spend my entire paycheck on games <laughs> so he has someone to play with for a week and then until he drops it. My goal is to be homeless with you, Adam, where we live in a cardboard box, we're stealing electricity from whatever restaurant we're behind, and we're just playing VR together, man. It's like the ultimate brotherhood that I want you to join. You're not even playing VR! That's true. We'll just play video games in general. Adam, quick question about your Final Fantasy stuff. This is like the the second of like a trilogy or quadrilogy. Yep. yep so sure. are you going to play the third one? I probably will because I have enough in that I'm like, it would be nuts not to play the third one. It's not going to come out for another three years. My hype level is at an all-time low. I would rather have Final Fantasy 17 at this point than they're going to call it Reunion. Um, I almost guarantee it. I'll put money on it. How? What? Let's have a bet here. Let, and they haven't come out with the name. So I'm not saying okay. that knowing that it's already called Reunion. But do you want to have some type of bet? A well, beat bet? A game bet? Like if I lose, I have to buy any game you say? I don't know. What, what do you want to do here? I, I, you, this is, I'm not in a good position because I know nothing about this this ecosystem i just picked I, one there was remake rebirth i feel like the last one has to be reunion or or re i can't say that word um anyways <laughs> <laughs> he comes up with one joke and then stops <laughs> if you don't want to take the side action you don't no, want to take the side action you know i can't say no this is a bean bet through and through we're talking about three beans if the name is reunion you're down in three barf beans baby and oh, they have to be barfed? They're not randomized? One of them has to be barfed. How about that? And since it's an imbalanced proposition, because I know nothing about Final Fantasy, I only have to eat one. I'll, I'll take oh, that one. Oh, what? Dude, you gotta Dude put I don't know this. what it's going to be. I mean... Oh, you're just, you just say because you only know one word that begins with R-E? No, it's because I legit think it's going to be called that. But three to one seems... Seems steep. Three, three to three. three. And okay, yours, okay. one of yours doesn't have to be a bar. You just roll. But it could be. They could, it could be. be bar. Man. Oh, do we get to eat them together or does it have to be separately eaten? You know they have to be separate. Dang it. The thing yeah. is, like, if you get a barf and a rotten egg at one go and you eat it at once, that might be worse. I, I don't know. We did it a while ago, but I don't remember what the yeah. results were. Yeah. No, the, the other game I've been playing is Helldivers, Adam. That game's so good. Helldivers 2. Everybody who plays PlayStation, they know what Helldivers 2 is. That game, I, I will say, the game crashes all the time. There's some weird bugs in it. I, for the first time in my PlayStation 5's life, I got a green screen of death last night when I was playing it. But the game is so good, you're just like, I got to get back in there. I got I to gotta get back in there and play some more. It's so fun. It's so good. It's so simple. You're just, you're, you're one of four dudes, and you're dropped on a planet, and you got to, like, complete a mission. And it's trying to kill you constantly. It's so, so freaking fun. Watch a video. I'll probably stream it one day, Adam, just for giggles. Because I'm so good is, at it. Like, that's only something I would like. Constant action. You you get, it, it's co-op, right? Yeah. Um, the thing is, like, how how difficult is it? You told me you die all the time. No, you there's like there's like nine difficulty levels. And so you start on the first one that's like called trivial. Then there's easy, then there's medium. And then there's like, hard and challenging and stuff like that so I'm, I'm up to like the fifth difficulty level now and what i can handle but uh if you can play co-op with somebody that you're actually willing to talk to it makes it a lot easier when you can actually talk about stuff um what's the weirdest thing you've talked to your co teammates or whatever about or do you not I don't talk i don't talk to them man wow. nobody i play with has their mics turned on so yeah i guess oh. they're in parties or something like that i don't know okay last question here uh Another great game you you've played is Legendary Tales. Uh, how, yeah. how much have you how much have you played of of Legendary Tales? I haven't played any Legendary Tales this week because I've been playing Helldivers. I've been playing a Survivor Man. So that's you, why I it. buy it because I'll buy it. You'll play one time like after the oh, fall, no. and then I'll never play it again. No, now Survivor Man's done. I can play VR other VR games again. 
I I I can't. I don't you know, know if what? I can trust. If someone else will agree to play with me, that will up my chance of buying it. But Let's write a contract. If you buy the game, I guarantee you I will play 10 hours of the game with you within within the first three months of you owning the game. And if not, I will send you the money for the entirety of the game. Oh, wow. That's actually a pretty good. Uh... And, but you can't be saying no just to get your money. <laughs> and then after three weeks I'm like, or three months, I'm like, let's go, man. Let's play. That's brilliant. Um, okay, okay. I think that's fair. So anyhow, you bet you've been playing Survivor Man, eh? Yeah, yeah. So let's. This is. This will be a review. Uh, Adam, I don't have the soundboard ready. Let's go ahead. Have the soundboard ready. He, he never. He never does. Um, let's get a. Let's get a soundboard in here. Ready. One, two, three. No. All right. Or anything. Oh wait. Let me... it's, it's that thing where it's really low. And here's the thing. There it is. Now you got it. There it is. All right. This is a review of Survivor Man VR: The Descent. This was published. I believe developed by, I couldn't find, by VR Kiwi Oi. You might know them. They're the people that made uh, the Pigeon, Pigeon VR. And they also made you Operation. Love. You love yeah. that. That was pretty fun, yeah. They also made, um, shoot, there's another game they released recently. Oh, Operation Serpent, which is like a cheaper light gun shooter for PSVR 2. Haven't played that yet, but this game came out, priced at $19.99. We were provided a review copy by the publisher. Thank you very much for that. But Adam... We're going to get right into it. I got three counts. First count, I've got wood. So, for the people that don't know, Survivor Man is a TV show. So, Bear Grylls had his show where he would do survival stuff. He got kind of outed as being like a guy who was faking it. So, this guy, oh my God, what's his name? Lee Les, Stroud. Lee Stroud? Yeah. Lee, yeah. Les Stroud. Les Stroud. Uh, he used to do his own show where he'd record himself doing all the survival stuff. Really cool, really interesting. In this game, you are in a helicopter, and you crash land on top of a mountain, and then you have to use Les Stroud. He's your guide, and he kind of guides you into how you're going to survive in this horrible situation where you've crash landed on a helicopter, and you got to get down to the shore so you can get rescued. Um, so right out of the gate, it's in the name. This is a survival game. So what does a survival game mean? You got to collect pieces of wood. You got to collect equipment. You got to craft. You got to do stuff like that. Um, so that's that's what the game seems like it's going to be right from the get-go. You start out, you, you start walking down the snow path, and Les Stroud is like, oh, this is a perfect place for you to set things up at. You see right here, you're going to have your campfire here. You're going to have a place where you can work on stuff here. You're going to be protected from the wind here. Here's where your bed's going to go. And so you start gathering material to do that stuff. But the issue is, Adam, is they're like, you got to build a fire. So you have a little thing on your watch, and you tap it, and it tells you what you got to do. And it's like, find seven pieces of wood. And you grab seven pieces of wood, but... There's like exactly seven pieces of wood out there. And so you, it, it's not like, if you didn't find the pieces of wood, it's not obvious anymore where that wood's going to be. And so you got to go exploring, but there's not anything else to really find out there. Or if there is something else to find out there, you will pick it up. And if you're lucky, the audio in the game will work and you'll hear Les Stroud in your, in your headset telling you, oh yeah, that's a boot. You're going to want to hang on to that for later. Or he'll tell you something like, oh, that's actually useless. Unfortunately, the sound bites only work maybe about half the time. There was one time they worked in one ear. One time it sounded like he was like a mile away, so I couldn't even understand what he was saying. And the inventory system is that you have, you can put one thing on your belt on the left, one thing in your belt on the right, and then you can hold two things. And that's about all you can do. So I'm collecting seven pieces of wood. I can see all the wood I have to get, but I can only hold at most four. Oh, actually, I can only hold three. Because the very first thing that happened is he's like, guess what? I'm going to give you a knife. That's how you're going to survive here. So he hands you a knife, and he says, put it in your belt. And there was one time I was like, you know what? I'll set my knife down here, grab my wood, and come back to it. And he yelled at me. I set my knife down. He said, you just committed the worst mistake. You set your knife down. You're never supposed to set your knife down. And so I had nowhere to put the wood, and so I was exploring, trying to find the wood. When you're exploring and doing stuff, you think you're accomplishing something because your wristwatch starts like beeping and stuff like that. But I have no idea what the beeps mean because I, I get, my wristwatch would buzz or beep and I'd tip it and nothing would change. Um, you're supposed to watch your calories. You start with like 4,000 calories. And as you do stuff, you burn your calories. You don't want to run out. Um, and so I was worried about that. So like I don't want to explore too much because I might not have enough to survive the day. Um, if you get too cold, you got to go hang out by the fire and just sit there while you warm up to 37.5 degrees and you can go back out and do some more stuff. Um, so it's, I don't know, the, the limited inventory space makes the crafting painful. There's a little bit of a lack of direction because the audio doesn't always work. And it, 
it just all kind of comes together to make this like survival crafting game really frustrating to play with and really confusing when it shouldn't be confusing because you should have Les Stroud there telling you exactly what to do. Um, but he only seems to show up half the time. So on one count of I've got wood, I find Survivor Man VR guilty. Any questions, Adam? Yeah. Was there any, what you just described sounded not fun. Was there any redeeming quality of the, whether it may be crafting or it just sounded like things that you got to do to survive, right? Like reasonable things they would ask you to do, but not fun things. Who wants to stand beside a fire for two minutes in real time till you warm up? Like, I wouldn't want to do that. Is there some, something about it that actually is enjoyable and you could like? So I, I think that the advice he's giving might be actual valid advice. So in some sense, it's a bit educational. Like it, it does seem like things he's asking you to do that you would do, like you do have to consider um, if you were to try to survive. So like, not only do I have to gather the wood, I have to get something that will like start the fire. So some paper, and then I have to get some accelerant. And so I had like chapstick that I could rub on the paper to turn it into an accelerant so I could actually light the fire. So that was kind of cool. Like it, it's stuff that you wouldn't see and say like, um, Song in the Smoke, right? Which is another survival game. Um, but that stuff is so scripted, right? There's there's not anything else that you have to consider. You just do exactly what he's telling you right then and there. So maybe you're learning something. That's nice. I do have some good qualities about the game. I'll get that in, get that into my uh, my second point. Um, but other than that, I there wasn't anything like super fun and exciting about the crafting in the building. Cool. All right. All right, moving on to the next point. On count number two, weathering the elements. Adam, this game has some surprising elements to it. Um, and th this is probably my best chance to make a positive case for this game. Um, one, there are some set pieces that occur that I don't even know. I wouldn't if, know if I'd qualify them as set pieces, but music kicks in at certain points and it really sets the tone for the game. And it caused me to dial a step back and really appreciate what I was seeing. So one example is I was up on the mountain gathering materials and as I was walking down the sunset and night kicked in and I could see the Aurora Borealis and the music was playing and something about that atmosphere, even though the graphics aren't great, this is built on the quest and it looks like a quest game. It did nothing special about PSVR two happening here, but despite the visuals not being that impressive, that was really nice. Another good example was when I was, there's a part where you're kayaking through the glacier and you're just kind of kayaking through a river and it's not like super fun, but the music kind of came in and there was a lot of nature going around and it really set kind of a meaningful moment of being like, Hey, you know, if you were really in this situation, yeah, it's stressful and hard to survive, but it's also a chance to like really admire some beauty that like no human is ever going to see. Um, and so it, it, you know, really had me appreciate the splendor of nature, although it can be horribly, you know, frightening and, and, and frightful. Um, but one of the, one of the most interesting things that happened and it ended up not being, not coming to pass was you were in the helicopter, you fell out of the helicopter, but the helicopter crashed higher up on the mountain and Les Stroud. So what he does is he materializes in front of you as like a VR character and talks to you. He's looking up at the mountain and he looks at you and says, that's really enticing, right? There was a pilot there. There might be somebody up there. So what are you going to do? Are you going to go up there and rescue him? Or are you gonna are you gonna risk it to rescue him, or are you gonna stay down here and ensure your own survival? Tough question. Well, at first I was like, wow, this is like the first real moral quandary I've been placed in in a video game, where it's like, oh, maybe I should rescue him, and maybe that's something that you get a different ending in the game, or maybe I need to really make sure I focus on my survival before I try to rescue anybody else. You know, put the mask on your face before you put it on your passenger. Um, turns out there's no moral quandary there. There's only just the next thing you have to do. So it's no check. And then when you Minor spoiler warning for 15 minutes into the game. You go up there, dude's already dead. He didn't even say anything about the guy being dead. He's just <laughs> there's just a dead guy hanging there, and you steal his helmet for no real reason. I don't know. <laughs> but at first, I was like, "This is amazing! Like, I'm actually going to be uh, having to think about this and feel bad about this." But really, it's just like, uh, "No, you're not going to. He's dead. Whatever." Um, so yeah, th those are the nice things about the game. I'll, I'll probably say is that there are some elements that are like okay, this is interesting, this is fun, these are some new feelings that are being brought up by this game. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it with, uh, yeah, weathering the elements. Any questions, Adam? Yeah, I, I feel like the, so you mentioned the graphics are, like, is it, how much of it is a, 
fetch quest type thing, like where you're just having to constantly collect stuff compared to when you're actually yeah, applying the chapstick or actually making a fire, actually doing something. I'd say maybe 75% of the actual gameplay is fetch quest. It's like, oh, gather three of these things. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. And just, just to be clear, in the beginning, it's not like you had a choice of, hey, I want to go to the helicopter. He just says it as a rhetorical question, and really there's only one thing for you to do, right? Pretty much. There was a point where I was like, I couldn't find any more firewood. I didn't know what I was supposed to be looking for because the audio cut out, and I didn't know what it was telling <laughs> me to do. And so I just started walking towards a helicopter, and it was like, nope, nope, the snow's too deep. You can't get this. And I was like, F you, Les. I'm going to keep going. And then he chimed in again. He's like, "This is listen, it's way too deep. You're not going to make it. And I was like, screw it. I'm going to keep going. He's like, you're you're not you're not even moving anymore. You're just punching through snow. You don't have enough calories to get up here. So you got to go back. We got to solve this problem later. So it's like you have a choice, but not really. And you'd think that like me ignoring the warnings three times would end up me with me dying, but it didn't. And I just turned around and went back to the camp. And and apparently I was supposed to grab something else. So it was yeah, nothing nothing too exciting there. Cool. All right, ready for number three? Do it. All right. Okay, yeah, for the case of uh, weathering the elements, I find you guilty. On the third count of calorie deficiency, Adam, I'm just going to get it out, out of the, the front. This game is an hour long. This game is an hour long. I played the game for 30 minutes, and I was like, let's take a break. We'll come back to it. We'll tackle it. You start the game. There's like six levels, and 30, it took me 30 or 45 minutes to do the first level, and then I just kept playing through and I thought I had finished the first level, and then it took me back to the main menu, and oh, lo and behold, I actually completed all six levels. Um, the issue is that for a game that could be like a surviving crafting game, it's not. They teach you how to build a fire, and you never have to do it again. They teach you how to put accelerant to the paper, you never have to do it again. Um, I, I say they teach you. The quest makes you do it. Um, maybe one of the funniest things that happened was you had to get your boots, and you had to get like a basket, and then cut the basket with the knife that he gave you and then stick it on your boot so you have snowshoes so then you can go up to the helicopter. When I put the snowshoes on, I looked down and I had these little boots down at the, on the floor where my body would be and they had the little crates on them. But then when I walked, they didn't move or anything. So they were just these two little shoes skating around whatever direction I was looking. And if I were to like go over like a bump, it's not like my height would change. It's just the shoes would move up closer to my head and stuff like that. So. It's really like, you ever play a game where you have like free roam with the mouse? Like if you, you know, Pavlov and you're dead, you can fly around, walk about mini golf, you can fly around and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like you're playing that. Like that is the physics engine at play. You're never leaving footprints or anything like that. Everything feels really kind of tacked on and cheap. Um, other interesting thing is after they like make such a huge deal about never losing your knife, like right away, you have to sacrifice your knife for something. And so like they made such a huge deal, like never take it off your hip, never take it off your hip. And I had all these things in my backpack that I could be used to rappel down a cliff that I could tie the rope to. But he's like, nope, got to use your knife. Looks like it's going to have to be your knife. And I was like, what, what is the point of this whole thing that they were doing here? There's another one where they were like, oh, that's way too far out of a drop. You can't get anything there. So I had to throw a rock at something to get it to fall off the cliff and then walk around the cliff down to the bottom and pick it up. After they told me it was too far to go to get that, it, all these mechanics are used once and never used again. So you don't feel like you're doing anything. Um, they have a backpack that like you can't even put items in unless it's like a scripted item that they want you to put in there. So you don't know what you're doing. The, the entire game feels like one giant tutorial level. And then after that, you're done. They have kayaking sections which are kind of fun, but they're also very cheap. It's just obviously a mini game where like, you dip down on the right-hand side and it turns you right. You dip down on the left-hand side, it turns you left. And that's it. Those are two levels right there you got for you. Um, there was one time I saw an animal and it glitched and that's what allowed me to win. Um, it just, when the game was done, I was like, great, let's start playing some more. And it was done, absolutely done. If you know what you're doing, you can probably run through the game in 30 minutes. Um, and I think that's all there is to it. Like, it, it's a shame. I, it really feels like they meant to make something much bigger. They ran out of money, and they were just like, all right, here's an hour. So if, if you really like Les Mills and seeing a virtual avatar of Les Mills talking to you and you really like Survivor Man, maybe you'll find something to enjoy here. But 20 bucks for one hour of content that's not even that like engaging or enjoyable, it's a really rough call. So, yeah, for the, for the count of calorie deficiency, I find you guilty.
<laughs> did you die ever? I died three times. Um, one time I died on kayaking because I didn't turn fast enough. I think another time I died because I fell down a hole. Um, and then another time I died, I think, just because I probably fell down a hole again because I didn't know where to go. It keeps track of how many times you die. But, I mean, I, I never died because I did something wrong. I died because, like, the game wasn't giving me clear direction. Okay. <laughs> All right, final verdict. Final verdict. Survivor Man VR. Uh, we only knew each other for such a short time, but I can't help <laughs> on, the, on the charge of whether or not you are a good game. I have to find you not guilty. That, that's a... Uh... <laughs> Is that your first not guilty? Ah, I don't want to say it is, but it might be the case that it is. Um, yeah, I'm usually doing hungs here, but yeah, this one, yeah. this one's not. I just, I really can't. Even for twenty bucks, I really can't. Five bucks, you might have a good time, but this is less content than you get in some of those free games that came out on PSVR one, like the Operation Nightfall, where you're like parachuting, or just any any VR experience that was done for free. This is less content than that, so it's pretty rough to recommend it at the price of twenty bucks. Five bucks, maybe you're kind of interested just to have a little bit of goof off time. I don't know, but Did it's they rough. do anything to separate this from the quest game? I I didn't recall. I don't recall anything. So, no, yeah, nothing. that you know that that's a that's a bummer. I know resources yeah. are always an issue, but it's they the, it's meta pops up as one of the like people that paid for the game when it like you know when a game starts it shows all the publishers and stuff yeah, yeah. meta popped up they financed the game maybe that's why they didn't do anything with it but adam next we got to put this at the list um you know what this is great uh epic roller coaster bottom four epic roller coaster travel the world cactus cowboy and switchback uh i hate switchback so much that's staying at the bottom i'm putting it below cactus cowboy which was a free game yeah. Um, and below Epic Roller Coasters too. So we're putting uh, Survivor Man VR at the bottom. I'd stream this game for people to watch, but I'd hate to spoil the entire game for everybody on a stream. Yeah, it would um, have to be the shortest golden stream. Yeah, it. Do I will say it does have a platinum trophy. Um, so I could get a platinum trophy, but some of the things are like you have to die seven times from starvation or something like that. It's like okay, I'm just gonna sit around and wait to die a bunch. I don't know. Huh. Uh, yeah. Rough. Glad we were doing that uh, that trophy hunt, that competition. But yeah, no, I think uh, you made good points. I think you saved some people some time and some money. Probably more money than time because it's only an hour. But, you know. <laughs> no matter no matter what they do, they're going to save time with this game because yeah, you're done with it in an hour. But, yeah, no, I think that's it. Rest of our stuff, I think we should just talk about uh, next segment. I guess. Yeah, yeah, kick it off to the next segment. All right, well, we'll see you guys after the break. It's segment two, play PSVR two, the podcast two. Alex, the thing is, I listened back to some of our the hits in the first segment. They're funny. They're almost funny as a chicken. <laughs> but do you know why a chicken is funny? Why is a chicken funny, Adam? Because <laughs> <laughs> I bet Nat Brat wouldn't find that. Where, funny. Where, no. I've asked you before, where do these jokes come from? Is it an email? Are you getting forwarded emails? Is this so joke here's what, here's, No, no, here's what happens. I get desperate. I, I don't prepare the jokes because I hope they come to me. When they don't come to me, I do a frantic search right before. And I am <laughs> like, I need anything. I look at, at puns. Most of the jokes are too inappropriate. And, uh, but every now and then I come up with one that like that one's lame but lame enough that I think it could be funny. And then the delivery is all me, baby. It's all delivery. Yeah. It's all delivery. That's, that's what, that's what sells the jokes. Yeah. 
cars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you can use that for, I don't know, your family or. That's going to be my answer every time my kids ask me a question. So why is that? Cars. Ask the chicken. Ask the chicken, kids. Yeah. Uh, we got news, all right? Game announcements coming out the wazoo, but this is not an announcement, but Cube VR, that Minecraft clone. Adam, I was lukewarm on this one. They announced it's coming out March 16th. They've been updating people on Reddit saying, you know, we're going through the QA process, but March 16th, the release date. Have you seen any footage of this game, Adam? Yeah, it. you know, I like these games for a short time, right? Like uh, Discovery was a game on PSVR, similar-ish, and another Minecraft clone that I enjoyed for, you know, five to ten hours. I really enjoyed it. But then th- it doesn't keep my attention in the long term. But I think the same thing is going to happen here. It's going to be make for a really fun, you know, five hours, ten hours. But then... You know, who knows? It's really going to depend on creativity. I am going to make, if you remember, one of my creations in Discovery was it's a big hippo and you walk in its mouth and it's a maze inside and you have to go through everything and you come out of his butthole. I may do that again, but instead of a hippo, it should be another animal. What What is another animal I could use? A giraffe. So you have a long drop. Once you get into the neck, it, it could be a giraffe. It could be a pig. It could be a. I, I'll figure it out. I'll, I, figure have, it out. I have six days to think about it. So, like I said, I'm not super interested in the Minecraft stuff. My daughter started playing it recently, and she really wants me to play. It. I think instead of playing Minecraft, I might try to get her to play this with me because it looks like it looks at first like a Minecraft clone, but the graphics are way better than Minecraft, which has me. Yeah. Kind of kind of engaged on that front. Like it, it looks really good graphically. Like I think there's ray tracing or something like that. They really beefed it up. Um, it doesn't seem like it's a quest port. It seems like it's a PC port, which is good news. Um, also like the you know, chopping down a tree is more visceral. And then when you chop the wood, it like the wood separates based on where the axe hits and stuff like that. Just a lot of cool things in there. It seems like somebody just really made a better version of Minecraft, hopefully. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Adam, another game was released, a little platformer game called Stilt. Have you seen the trailer for that? Did we watch that together? We did not watch it together. You did mention it was the game where you have stilts for hands. All of these just seem not something I'm really interested in. It's like, oh, guess what? The bat. Toss. They're all like these little games with these little, just little things about them that make them unique. But I, I'm just not buying it. I you know, I'm, I want the persistence, man. I don't want, oh, guess what? Instead of a bat, now you have stilts for an arm. They're cutesy. May not be a bad game whatsoever, but just something that I can't get hyped for. Speaking of the persistence, are you bummed to hear that the people, Fire Sprite Studios had some layoffs this past week? They're the people that made the persistence, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I mean, I, I, I never want someone to lose their job. Except for, I, I guess who was that one? I was like, I don't give a crap. Firewall Ultra. Was, I that... guess, was it was it Firewall or was it Switchback VR? People? Might have been Switchback VR. Yeah, 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 either way, um, the so I feel bad for them as a human, but as a studio, I, honestly, I couldn't really care. What have you done for me lately? Nothing. I they made, pers- they made Horizon Call of the Mountain. They made that. Um, and- it is disappointing. Okay, well. The Persistence was such a good game, right? It was so good. I would yeah. love to see what they do with a sequel to that game, but it seems like it's just never going to happen, right? It's been long enough. I would go back and play it again. See, yeah. that's the issue I have potentially with the PSVR 2. We've got some games that we play that are good, but there are more games on the PSVR that I would want to go back and play again. Could it just be because it's been so long? That's been out three years or whatever, right? So I guess maybe it's unfair to compare three years of development compared to one. But, like, come on. Yeah. I mean, Legendary Tales could fit that bill for you, but you you don't want to have that conversation, Adam. Well, uh, you know what? Persistence was not $55. Also, Persistence looked a lot more fun. That's that. you, You make a point. Adam, another game got released. This game is called Train Chase, and I wasn't even going to entertain this game, 
because it looked like a budget version of Gazzlers, which already just seemed like a budget VR game in general. Yeah. Um, but then, oddly enough, when the game came out, the developer posted on Reddit, Ryan Games, R-H-I-N-E Games, uh, they posted a, a post on Reddit, one of the highest upvoted ones there, said, Train Chase, here is why I released it, even though you'll not like it. And he had a whole page of posts basically talking about how he using this to teach himself how to make a game and teach himself how to complete and deliver a game. Uh, he had some interesting things in there. Like he, you know, he released the game for quest. Then he made a, P, a steam version and then he wanted to put it on PSVR two. And he said, getting it on the PSVR two is actually pretty easy. And he enjoyed working with the PSVR two. And he said that the hardest part was like the certification steps to get it like past the Sony's QA. But he said that was worth it because it made all versions of the game better. Um, but the game is only six ninety nine, and the honesty of this developer kind of tugged at my heartstrings. So I went and pulled the trigger on it. He's already released updates and had a bunch of stuff going in it, so he's getting a lot of positive feedback. But Adam, six ninety nine is that is that low enough for you to throw a bone towards an indie developer and and help help them achieve their dream? See, that's the thing that makes me want to buy it. I know there have been games that have only had two or three developers that have made a game, and I still crapped on it. The issue is, or, or the good thing, whatever, however you want to phrase it, I like that this guy had the balls to come out, admit, dude, I'm one person. I know it's not a great game. Here's why I did it. I like that. Admit it. Like, come out with that. That's good stuff. The honesty is what, honesty, integrity is what's going to win me every time. Not freaking legendary tales, guys saying, hey, I know that we only have two or three people on the team, but guess what, butthole, $55. And they won't admit the things that are gone wrong. They came up with excuses. So I like this. I think I will buy this just to support the guy. I may not even play the game. I may just buy it and then not waste my time. But there you go, bud. You have a free five bucks for me. My question is, I didn't read the Reddit post. Is he working on something else? And this was just like a first project? Uh, I don't think he's doing anything else right now. He said it's it's a wave shooter. It's graphically not impressive. It's relatively short. Here's why I still released it. Three years ago, I started my solo game dev life on the side while working a full-time job. So I think he was really just like wanting to make a game and see if he could get a game published. He's um, living the life that you, if you had the balls, want to live. If I had the time, I'd love to make some crappy VR game. Not calling his game crappy. I haven't played it yet, but maybe it's crappy. He says it's Your game would crappy. be crappy. Here's the thing, Alex. You need me because I'm the idea guy. You're the technical guy. I I've remember what was that game where I was like, you start out as food and then you go through the human, you become the turd. Then you actually visualize getting crapped out and then you go down the toilet and it's like a water slide. And then it's and hard to go home. Yeah, I mean, it would be a good that game it would be a hit people would love it it would we would release it for like five bucks six bucks we would admit its faults people would it would be an indie darling it would be like i am bread it would be great you'd say you'd it'd be called this game is a turd but because you are a turd well, that's not the. Oh, that's only a part of the game, right? We, <laughs> okay. you know, it, it, ultimately, what I wanted to do is, you're a turd. You get flushed back. You go to a landfill on the sewage, or whatever. You eventually get soaked up by the planet and become food again. And then that's where the replayability comes in. Second time, maybe you're a banana. You're it's not. like a roguelike, then. Yes, you're. Yes, see, there's so much we could do with this. <laughs> Oh, you become a tree. And it would be like Evo on SNES. You slowly keep evolving. I love it. Until you're what I like I like how you've not really mentioned any gameplay mechanics beyond the fact that your food you get eaten and you turn into poop. Like, do I even have to hit any buttons on the controller or do I just sit there and wait for an animal to come eat me? No, no. It's like um for like as you're a turd, you gotta like wiggle. And that's how you get out of the anus. And then you mentioned Vertigo Home as you're going down the, the tube. And, you know, it's going to be like Vertigo Home. Uh, we, we could do something, you know, like that in every stage of the process. And then as you continually evolve, um, you know, we, we could make it work. But again, we won't because you don't have the balls to help out with the project. 
So yeah, I just, yeah. Adam did all the hard work, everybody. Now it's time for me to do the easy work, but I just don't have the balls to do it. And <laughs> learn learn how to make a VR game all by myself that involves. We don't, we're not going to tell you how the game works. It's just something about being a turd and wiggling. Hey, um, I I could come up with that easy. I would even <laughs> help. Maybe. I, how much do you think we would have to pay someone to do that for us? Fifty thousand, sixty thousand, maybe a hundred thousand dollars. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's gonna it take a lot of money to get somebody to code something like that up for us. Seriously? There's art assets they gotta build. They gotta they gotta build something. Yeah, out yeah, and test this it. guy who just released his game, he's not making no hundred thousand dollars off. No, he's not making it, but like to get somebody else to do it for us, yeah. He's this is a labor of love for this guy. I, I'm just imagining Adam sitting at like a at a CEO meeting where somebody says, "Give us your five ideas for for the next gen hits," and they all involve <laughs> they all start off differently, but they all end up you being a turd wiggling out of somebody's butt and going down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> In a world, that, that, <laughs> that is a game I would play. That would be a. I, I mean, I would pay 10 bucks for that. Even if it were bad, I wouldn't care. Like the, just like Mr. Mosquito, stupid idea, idiotic, I, but I love, it's so unique and it's funny and boom, that, that is what sells. you got to make yourself unique. That's why Bug Smacks was such a hit. I love the idea of a franchise that people don't know is a franchise. All these games that seem different. One's like a zombie wave, looks like a zombie wave shooter. One looks like a skateboarding game. One looks like, you know, an RPG. But in the end, they all culminate into the same thing. <laughs> you end up getting eaten. You're a turd and you're going down the toilet. And nobody knows until they get to the end of the game. Ah, damn it. I bought one of Adam's games again. <laughs> <laughs> and we, yeah, we commission different people. So it's different studios and they have no idea. Every time it's a different studio. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> you, you see the horror setting on somebody's face. Is there, they're playing the final boss. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They attack me. I'm frozen. They're walking over. Oh, they're eating me. Oh, oh no. Oh, not again. No. <laughs> Another poop tube game. <laughs> <laughs> poop tube. Uh, see, I, I legit think one of those games would actually do pretty well. <laughs> the thing is, one thing I struggle with, Alex, and I don't want to get too psychological here, but like, have you have kids? Hopefully, one day I'll have kids, but. I feel like I have it left. And in the immediate future, I am not going to leave a permanent mark on the world, right? And one thing I somewhat am jealous of some of these, you know, developer nerds is that even if it's not a good game, just like movies, you created something that will be there for eternity. It's not going away. Maybe it'll get taken off PlayStation Store, but someone has it on their console. Someone streamed it. It's out there. And it will be there forever. Hundred grand. Is it worth saying, you know, I came up with the game. I was part of a, a development studio and made a game that people enjoyed. I I think I think you would get more value if you just it'd probably be a lot cheaper, maybe easier than you think to like put the game together yourself. And I do think there's translational skills you develop in taking a game. I, I think this is why the guy did it. It's one thing to make a game. It's another thing to make a game that gets past a QA process and gets put on a storefront and gets sold. You know, that there's a lot of extra things that happen in the end that would be a valuable learning experience. And then you could parlay that to any other, you know, game dev job if you wanted a game dev job. Yeah, I shipped a game, right? I shipped this game. Yeah, it's the Poop Tube series, which you might not be familiar with. And if maybe you are familiar with it and you love it. But I shipped a game. Adam, you should you should look into it. And start with Chat GPT. Say I want to make I want to learn how to make a VR game. What do I do? Apparently, Unreal Engine makes things a little bit easy. Might be easier than you think, man. I know you got the I know you got the skills. You just I really doubt it. it's easy. And what someone not knowing anything, I, it's I'm not, not saying it's, it's easy. not like oh I forgot calculus and so let me go back and learn it or like oh I don't know I don't uh, you know some. I don't know organic chemistry at all, but I took chemistry. I took some physics. Like yeah. I could parlay those in organic chemistry. I know nothing about this. I don't think it's as easy as you think it is. I, I don't think it's easy. I think it's easier than you think it might be though. But I think 
you need to grow a pair and <laughs> and make your game <laughs> and make my game or work with me to make my game. No, I do. I got to do all the hard work. I get it. Adam, let's move on. Speaking of one man teams, homeboy, the legendary Jeff Minter. I don't know if you know who this guy is. Sounds made, real familiar. Crazy he made, familiar. made your beloved Tempest 2000 game. Yeah. He made he made that uh that llama sheepy game. I forget what it was called on PSVR one. That trippy shooter. He just released his new game, Aka R. That's two Ks and two Rs. Um, just came out of PSVR two, nineteen ninety nine. Adam, I know you like the Tempest two thousand soundtrack. Do you like the Tempest two thousand game? Have you played it? I have. It's. I mean, I guess not my favorite. It's a little boring, uh, but you know, I play. I played for the music. Um, you know, it's on my car. Actually, I play it. So, um, yeah, I don't know. But this game, I mean, sounds potentially interesting, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I bought. It. I buy all these guys' games because he makes like crazy games that are real trippy and fun. So I always, I always go for it, and he prices them reasonably. And it's one dude just like making cool stuff. So. I'm gonna try it out in VR. It's twenty bucks. It's not not a big ask. Certainly, I hope it gives me more value than um, Survivor Man VR. Unfortunately, uh, another game came out. Adam System Critical Two. This is like a love letter game to Mega Man. So somebody tried to make a first person VR Mega Man game. Would you be interested in that? There's platforming. There's shooting. You got the gun on your hand and you're shooting bad guys. Looks yeah, yeah I would simple. try that. Yeah, it looks pretty simple, but it's also twenty dollars. So it's like not asking too much. Uh, the mm -hmm. trailers looked all right, but the gameplay footage I watched seemed a little bit mm, lukewarm, but maybe it feels better than it looks. Um, but I don't know. Mega Man seems like something that could be done well in VR. I think you might have to do a bit more than what these guys were doing, but I, you know, if Aka R doesn't scratch that weird $20 itch, then maybe I'll be looking at System Critical 2. I don't know. Maybe the devs, I know you're listening to this. Send us a code. We'll talk about it. I know you're going to buy both those games. Just do it. I already bought Aka R, all right? It's downloaded on the console. Do it. I swear. I, yeah. Go ahead. Let's yeah, it. That's, that's it for the news, Adam, unless you have any big news. <laughs> oh, I've got news. Not really. I, uh, I'm i coming out with a game. Uh, no. <laughs> the poop tube. <laughs> the poop tube. I think uh, like there's no way that wouldn't get through QA, right? You might have I mean, to change a name. I don't know. I, the stuff they ask is always weird. Like. You know, unplug the controller, plug it back in seven times. Does the game still work? Like stuff like that. Yeah, but the thing is, like, if eighteen floors got through, surely that's what's mind blowing, right? Eighteen floors. There's, not, there's only three Black floors. Hole. Special delivery. Eighteen floors. Like switchback. I mean, like all of these games. Like if they got through, Cactus Cowboy. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll look into it. Up yours, Alex, and then yeah. I'll become a I'll become a millionaire. I'll have a whole franchise. It will the be poop great. tube games. Poop tube. <laughs> I mean, I really do think that game would be real simple. I mean, it would be good. Vertigo Home. Vertigo Home on the poop tube. Well, yeah, I like yeah. it. Adam, we got sales to get through, and then we'll close this mother out. Let's um, do it. These sales, I think they end in like four days. So hopefully, this gets published before those sales come out. But we'll we'll see. Right out of the gate. It, Angry Birds VR, Isle of the Pigs for eight ninety nine. I would rather be on a deserted island with an actual poop tube than a desert island with this freaking game. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. The don't last birds. The last worker nine ninety nine. You thought it was clever. I I I wasn't for me. You're thinking of the last Clockwinder, which I thought was clever. Last worker was kind of. I don't know, man. Okay. Uh, no, no. Okay. All right. Townsman VR for $19.99. It used to be 50 bucks, 40 bucks. That's a pretty big discount. How much is this? $19.99. Mm, 50% off. It has a demo. Play the demo. If you like it, buy it. That's my biggest suggestion. You got four days to do it. Brain Beats for $7.24. Bra 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 brain Beats. I'd rather beat off to another game. Get out. Don't play this uh four vr bowling for 9.99 i i i i i bowling isn't a bad idea people love freaking wee bowling well now yeah. you have it in freaking vr i don't still don't want to play it but it's an option 
if somebody made something of the quality of like walkabout mini golf, but instead it was just bowling and you had like weird lanes and stuff like that or power ups or something. That actually would be good. Yeah. That'd be pretty uh, fun. Adam, we didn't and, talk and about you Galaxy could Cup. play as a community, like uh yeah. 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 I think that'd be I really agree. fun. See, there's a second game. That's easier than my original game I wanted to make. But the ball you're rolling down, it's actually poop and you're rolling it down a tube. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> instead of a gutter ball, it's <laughs> it's a sphincter. And then it goes down and straight into the, you know, I guess down through the anus. And then you follow the ball as it goes through the gutter. <laughs> it's always had him moving through the anus. Oh, okay. Uh, how about The Room VR, A Dark Matter for sixteen forty nine? Mm, I didn't hear good things. I didn't play this, but I didn't hear good things. If you know the room games, I like the room games, and I thought this is a pretty good VR version of it. It's been upgraded for. I think it might be cheaper on PSVR one. I think it's a free upgrade, so do it. Do what you will. I don't know the price on PSVR one, but Synth Riders Remastered Edition for fourteen ninety nine. Oh, uh, that's a good price if you if you want to try this type of game out. I didn't love it. I like Beat Saber better, but if you want to try it, you're probably not going to get a better price than that. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Uh, Broken Edge for eight ninety nine. This is that sword fighting game. One v yeah. one sword fighting. There's a demo. Yeah, play the demo. Eight bucks is not much. I think we should try the demo against each other, Adam. But we do have Ghost Signal, a Stellaris game for eleven ninety nine. Mm, mm. Maybe it has a real cool name. I remember the trailer looks cool, but I have I've not seen gameplay. So I streamed the demo of this. There is a demo. And the demo is so good that I immediately bought the game after the demo. It's very fun. Um, different take on this kind of game, kind of like an RTS type roguelike thing, but it's really, really good. Um, Twelve ninety nine for Drums Rock, Adam. I would not. Well, all right, Drums. I I liked it, but okay. Um, Cities VR Enhanced Edition for nineteen forty nine. Again, it has a demo. Play that demo 30 minutes. And I forgot if that one's 30 minutes or an hour. Play the demo, figure it out, buy it if you like it. How about this? Speaking of demo, what about Demio for $25.99? Listen, that game would have to, I'm trying, what would you have to, you would need to find a consultant to code a game for me, for me to even download that piece of crap back on my PlayStation 5. <laughs> It's a fun game, but I, I I see where he's coming from. Adam, Kayak VR Mirage for fourteen ninety four. It's not it's not bad. The thing is, you're only gonna get three to five hours of like good time in it that you're really gonna enjoy. Uh, you're not gonna want to replay it. I would like to see it at ten for it to be like a yes. You need this game. If you're curious, I don't think this is a bad price. But if you could wait, I would wait for it to hit ten before like really doing it. I will say it's that's cheaper than Survivor Man, and it is better than the best parts of Survivor Man. So I'll just put that out there. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade Justice for twenty dollars and ninety nine cents. I need more. I need it off more than that. I mean, the game looks. I think there's a demo too. Looks like there's a free demo, so you should try that. That game actually looks really good. It looks like a very fun. It very well could be, but uh, twenty bucks uh, is that even a sale? What is it? Twenty five. It's normally twenty nine. Yeah. Yeah, get out of here. All right, Cactus Cowboy Desert Warfare. This is the single-player full campaign based on the free game that came out for $10.49. It just isn't fun. Oh, sorry. I thought the game was fun. The, the nice thing is it makes every game you play afterwards look amazing. So that's <laughs> something. You like every game. <laughs> it's like poop tube. Uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. If you made it, Adam, I might love it. But how about Transformers Beyond Reality for seventeen forty nine? No. This is a $10 game through and through. That's what it should be. $10 or less. Um, Colossal Cave for thirteen ninety nine. Is uh, that the is that the pseudo, like the sub name for your poop tube game? Uh, it should be. Colostomy Cave. Arise. You know, we could pull a ranch planet. We name it something oh. that even has a you like a good looking like artwork, yeah. but then the description in the actual game is nothing like yeah. Turns out you're going down poop tubes. Yeah, yeah, that would be actually hilarious. It would be something like instead of broken edge, be like broken, I don't know. Wedge. Broken wedge. Or I'm thinking like nunchuck brothers. And then they're like, oh, dang, it's going to be a karate game. And then it's just a no, it's game. about two pieces of turd stuck to each other going down the tube. 
Uh, Look, you could do karate until there's a break in class and you eat some like orange wedges and you're the orange wedges. That's what becomes the boop. <laughs> He's so into this idea. It's um, good. Like, tell me it's not good. Like, <clears throat> we got sales, Adam. We're running out of time. Arashi, Castles of Sin, Final Cut. There's two colons in that name for $20.99. I need it cheaper, man. I I think $20 is fine for this game. You have the good expectations. 15 is probably where it needs to be sitting at, though, for a, a confident recommendation. How about Knock for $14.99? No, 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 no. This is a $5 game because you're going to lose $5. You're not going to. No, don't waste your money. Don't do it. Unless about, you're like playing with children. <laughs> how about Red Matter for fourteen ninety nine? Not a bad price. Oh, uh, wait, Red Matter 1? Yeah. Oh, I would wait for a bundle. You need to get them as a bundle. Cause... Get it as a bundle for sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like 20 bucks for the bundle, that'd be good. 25 for the yeah, bundle, yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. But yeah. that's not an option right now, right? Yeah. Uh, Crossfire Sierra Squad for twenty two forty nine. Easy buy. Easy, easy buy. buy. Easy, easy buy at 30, right? Easy buy at 40. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Adam would pay 40 bucks for this game. He didn't yeah. know. I wouldn't pay 55 for it. Just think I'm not going to pay 55 for legendary tales, but I'll dang play pay 40. How about until you fall for 1874? No. <laughs> no. How about cooking simulator VR for 1999? Oof. I'm afraid it would be like a Les Stroud is just telling you what to do, fetch quest type thing. If so this is this is this is actually not. It's actually a very involved cooking game. I played the non VR version of it. It's very good, surprisingly. It, this is a shame because I wish I had more time. I would love to get into this game. It's like you know, got the the technical and depth of like farming simulator type stuff, but it's cooking simulator. You're like running a kitchen, making food, doing stuff like that. Looks really fun, really good. I just don't have the time. To get it's just in this a kind of shame game. that like I I couldn't make food myself like real food. Oh wait, I can. You don't have a full it's kitchen. You can't do stuff. Get in the kitchen. Adam Pavlov for nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, that's our last game on sale, Adam. There it is. Um, let me know what you think about our game. About and, our, the poop uh, tube. Yeah. I wonder if we could set up like a Kickstarter that I can go just temporary part time on my full time job to work on this. How much would you have to get paid per month to work on to start making this game? I'd have to do some math. Uh, if because right now I'm thinking like, how much would I have to pay Adam to make him make poop tube? Because here's the thing: if I uh, let's say I went part time and I did 80%. So I devoted one day a week to solely nothing but development. And then obviously I'm not going to get the same rate of pay. There's no way. So let's even say half of what I would normally get for that one day. Then I would consider it. That's a lot of money. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that, Adam. <laughs> How much were you even pay me? What freaking pennies on the hour? Hey, I'll bucks. give you fifty cents an hour. What? I'll give you twenty five bucks a month to make this game, Adam. What? <laughs> that, that's I mean, no, but you then you get all the profits when the game gets released. Twenty five bucks a month. Yeah, that's all right if I take six and a half years doing it. I don't care. No, man. actually, that's not even still. <laughs> that's not. Even, that's like I don't know, a thousand bucks. Like. <laughs> And then you release it and you have a game. And then I'm going to freaking rich because everyone's going to love it. Everyone's going to play the poop tube game. The poop yeah. tube franchise. <laughs> it's going to be great when you get to the poop tube part and it, it's all the same assets from the previous games. It's the exact same. Somehow this nunchuck brother is in the same toilet that the giraffe was going to in the first game. Here's an interesting take. But, 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 but uh, you could start as an egg coming out of the anus of a chicken only to be cooked, eaten, and coming out of the anus of a human. Does it always have to be coming out of a human butt? I, oof. No, that could be the sequel. <laughs> we could have farm tube, human and tube. So, like, if you're, like, doing, like, uh, there's some mini game and you, like, do really well at it, 
you know, like NBA Jam, you're on fire. I think if you're doing really well at it, what happens is as you're coming out of the out of the butt into the toilet, you hear my butthole's hot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Especially you have hot wings or something. Yeah, you got hot wings. You get hit with the with the butthole's hot. Yeah. What else? What other ones we got here? We got the butts. Yep. We get that. And then if you you get sent down, you go straight into the hole of the toilet without hitting the bowl. The ball gets in the hole. I'm unable to get <laughs> that liquid. Yeah, it's we so got dumb. we got all, all right, sorts I, of sound bites. I'm finished with you. I want to go play some games. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to episode. What is it, Adam? 146 of Play PSVR 2 the podcast. There's too many to count, baby. You'll find out when you click the link to listen and watch the episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to our review. If you like what we're doing, like and subscribe and tell your friends and go on iTunes and leave us a review. Or tell us all the horrible things you want to tell us. Tell us tell us what you think about the poop tube idea. Should we quit our jobs and make this game for you guys? Will you buy it? Will you pay for it right now so we know that we have enough money to make it? Let us know. Contact at playpsvr.com or hit us up on YouTube. We are at Gaming Is In Session. Thanks so much. For Adam, I'm Alex. Thanks for listening to Play PSVR 2, where virtual reality is our reality. Blammo! That's got to go in the game, too.